Well, the whole idea of having a Zigbee smart home is to be seamlessly connected with all of the things in it and most importantly, be able to have an affordable solution. And if you are like me, total DIY with our smart homes, chances are that you also use a Raspberry Pi. Now, thanks to electronic manufacturing, we are now able to get a small form factor, powerful and compact Zigbee into a standard Raspberry Pi housing. Say hello to the Raspberry 2 and let's integrate it into Apple HomeKit. Well, welcome to my channel and if you are into HomeKit DIY, then there are tons of tutorial videos that I have done. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Well, I am a big fan of having a Zigbee smart home. They are simply affordable, more device types, supported by multiple gateways and high availability. Now, just for the sake of numbers, there are around 1,819 Zigbee devices that you can choose from and install them in your smart home. Now, compare that to a thread compatible device, you can literally count on your fingers on how many are available. And then there is matter. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's save that conversation for another time. Now, the Zigbee gateway I typically use is the Combi 2 stick but I was also looking for something compact or an alternative solution that I could install in a PI housing and especially if you own and are using the hoops box. And that's where the Raspberry 2 fits the need. The installation is very straightforward. Depending on the PI case you are using, you will have to unscrew the four screws on the bottom of the hoops box and then take out the board. Now, before installing it, a quick size comparison of the same device to a SD card adapter. It's really small in size. And I also did go ahead and install the battery of type 337. The Raspberry 2 must be placed on the Raspberry Pi header as follows, and you want to press it down gently. Make sure it's not placed in an offset position as this will damage the module. Now, since the PIs are single board computers, all of the radios are also cramped into the board. Meaning, for the Raspberry 2 Zigbee radio to function well, we will disable the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios. So you may want to consider this if you are using plugins that connect with Bluetooth devices. So for all of this to work with Apple HomeKit, I have broken down the video into four parts with the timestamps in the description. They are one, let's enable all of the system permissions so that the hardware is available for use. Then we will need to install the MQTT service. And then my favorite, install the Zigbee to MQTT service, which opens up the endless possibilities to integrate Zigbee devices. Then we will install the plugin and expose the devices to HomeKit using hoops, but you can also do it with HomeBrick. So, if you're ready, let's begin with this tutorial. Now for the Raspberry 2 to be identified by the PI, this section is very important where we will enable the serial ports and at the same time disable the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios. Don't worry, I got the paste pin link in the description to copy all of the values. So let's open up terminal or you can even use putty. Let's reposition the screen and let's SSH into the box using the IP address. If you do see this error, then type open and copy paste the path and delete all of the contents in it. Let's SSH one more time. Type yes and then the password. Let's clear the screen and let's update the config.txt. Type in the password and hit enter. From here, you want to go ahead and enable two options. And add in two lines to disable the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And at the end of the file, you want to go ahead and add one more value. Hold Control X, type Y, hit Enter, and then from there, you want to go in and update the configuration of the PI. Go to interface options. 
Then go to serial port. Select no and then yes and then OK and then select finish. From here, the PI will reboot. We have completed a very important step and, and now let's go ahead to install the services. Now, MQTT is the first service we will install. Again, the link is in the description to copy paste all of the commands. Let's SSH back into the box using the IP address. Type in the password. Let's go ahead and copy paste the first command. Let's go ahead and copy paste the second command. Now, just in case you see this error, you can go ahead and paste this command which will fix the issue. Now, let's go and configure the MQTT to work within our network. Go to the end of the file and copy paste the configuration. Hold Ctrl X, type Y, hit enter. Now, let's create a username and password. And most importantly, don't forget to save this information. Well, to test the service, let's open MQTT Explorer. Update the host, username and password information. Click on connect. We do see a successful connection and the MQTT service is now enabled in our network. Well, the Raspberry 2 was initially on the supported Zigbee dev adapter list. But since the last website update, this device is no longer supported by Zigbee to MQTT. Well, it took me five days of figuring out how to make this work, visited multiple forums to get this device enabled and working without any hiccups. So the next five minutes, please execute in sequence all of the commands so the Raspberry 2 works without any hiccups as well for you. Let's go first and determine the location of the adapter identified by the PI. Then run the command again and paste the location. We do see the adapter has been found and has a location with two default user permissions. Don't forget to save this information. This next step is very critical to add more three user groups to this location. So please run these three commands by replacing the user information to hoops or PI if you are using Homebridge. Once completed, you want to run this command to list the available UART modules as shown in the screen. This will show you the adapter has been enabled and corresponds to the GPIO header. So once this is completed with no errors, we are good to install the Zigbee to MQTT service. From here on, let's copy paste the command from the web page guide. First, let's go ahead and set up the node.js repository. Let's go ahead to install or update the node.js. Once completed, we can check the node as well as the NPM versions. Let's copy paste to clone the Zigbee to MQTT repository. The next command is to change ownership to Hoops or PI in the case of Homebridge. This command is to change the access permissions of the system objects. Then let's change directory and install all of the dependencies. Now, depending on your internet connection, this will take between two to three minutes. Once the installation is complete, let's go ahead and configure Zigbee to MQTT. First things first is you want to update the MQTT settings with the host, user and password information. Then under serial settings, you want to update the port settings as well as add the adapter information. 
Then we will also enable the front end option so we can add remove the devices using a web interface using the IP address and port of the box. And we will also add the network key settings as well. Before you save, please check the information again and update where necessary. To save, hold Ctrl X, type Y, hit enter. So here's the moment of truth to check if the configuration works. Run npm start. Now that's the confirmation we want to see with no errors, the service works. Now let's enable Zigbee to MQTT to run in the background and start automatically by copying, pasting the entire information and update the user information to hoops or leave it as PI if you're using Homebridge. To save, hold Ctrl X, type Y, hit enter. Let's start the Zigbee to MQTT service. Let's check its status and the output confirming it's running with no errors. Hold Ctrl C to exit. Last but not the least, let's enable the service. Now let's do a quick reboot of the box and check the service is working. Let's check its status and the output confirming it's running with no errors. Let's open the front end using the IP address plus the port of 8082 that we had assigned. There it is. We can access the front end and it also found my Sonoff Zigbee outlet that works. Now, just a tip for y'all. Before going to the next step of exposing the Zigbee devices to HomeKit, go ahead and first add all of your Zigbee devices to Zigbee to MQTT and rename them so that when you expose them to Apple HomeKit, you can see the same names as well and also avoiding the rework. And once you're done adding all of your devices, go to settings, main and disable the option permit join and click on submit. With this being done, no more devices can be added to your Zigbee network and you can keep your Zigbee network secured as well. Well, exposing Zigbee devices to HomeKit is as one, two, three, very easy using Zigbee to MQTT because there is absolutely no devices configuration needed. It's a very straightforward process with no complexity. That's why it's my favorite plugin. All you have to do is open Hoops or Homebridge, go to plugins and type Z2M, and then click on install. Select the bridge you want to add it to. Once the plugin is installed, click on configuration or settings, and you will need to add only three values. That's it. Click on save, which will then restart the service. Go to logs and check if the plugin connects with the MQTT service. You will then see the service is connected and it imports the device as well. Then check the accessory section and you will be able to switch on and off the Sonoff outlet. Then we will go to bridges and add it to HomeKit by opening the Home app, tap on add accessory and scan the QR code. Add the service to your desired room and then add the device to your desired room as well. Let's test the device in the Home app and see if it captures all of the commands. Now let's go and see the logs. Yes, we can see it has captured all of the logs. So we've gone ahead and completed all of the integration between the um, Zigbee to MQTT service, Hoops, as well as to HomeKit. We could also uh, test the device, capture the logs using the home app. But there's one more thing we didn't check is how powerful is this uh, device, its network coverage. Based on the website is more than uh, 10 meters if it has a clear line of sight. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm right now located in a room which is almost uh, eight meters away from the Hoops box, which is in the living room. Plus, the door to this room is closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call onto the assistant to see if it can turn on this Sonoff device. And also take in note there are two cement walls. So I just want to make sure that the network coverage uh, is able to capture the device across the home. Hey Siri, turn on Sonoff. Okay, the Sonoff is on. So we can see that it has picked up the Sonoff with that distance and all of the barriers. Hey Siri, 
turn off turn off okay the sun off is off so in this case we can see that it is a powerful device knowing that it's um inserted in a raspberry pi housing finally there we are we have installed and configured the raspi 2 into apple homekit and we have that abundant choices of zigbee devices that we can choose from plus giving you that affordable solution to start with your zigbee smart home now to keep all of this going please don't forget to like share and subscribe because that's the real motivator that's the real driver the more the merrier for bringing all of this content so if there's anything i can help you with don't feel shy to leave a comment down below and we can always keep the conversation going as always never forget to visit the developers webpage to show them your support as well and most importantly don't forget to also sign up for the free live class on how to build manage and maintain your home computer network we all have questions that need answers so my friends until the next time stay safe have a nice day cheers and happy automation